Well, my name is Sean Mathis, and uh, I've been uh, part of the uh, Marketing Boost for about a year, but uh, the first, really the first five or six months, I honestly didn't do anything with it. Um, I started kind of later, uh, later half of last year, actually uh, getting to, to use it. I had some stuff in my business, product launches and things that came out. Uh, but I'm a digital marketing agency owner. Uh, I specialize in the insurance industry. I've also uh, created masterminds and digital products um, in the insurance space, but also work with some folks in the real estate space uh, from a television show called Million Dollar Listing. Uh, we work with the franchise in New York and LA, uh, help them launch a couple of digital products. I uh, worked with the uh, uh, season one apprentice runner up, Katrina Campins, and I've done some stuff with Grant Cardone. Um, creating some products for the insurance world and a uh, internet marketer and affiliate marketer. So um, in my presentation, I'll be brief uh, so you guys can ask some questions if you have any, but I just want to share why I jumped in immediately. Uh, the three powerful revenue streams that I've been able to generate from marketing boost and then how to leverage marketing boost to generate leads, uh, go over some brief targeting, ad copy and strategy. So with that, um, you know, why I jumped in, I was already using incentives to generate leads and I'd already found, that uh, incentives were an amazing way to generate leads. Unfortunately, um, incentives can be expensive, at least the good ones. And so I tested all kinds of different incentives out there. And uh, what I found just through trial and error was that the best ones were experience related incentives. So NBA tickets, NFL tickets, things like this, uh, baseball, hockey, but these things, uh, concert tickets, they're expensive to do. So, you know, spending two or $300 on an incentive just for one campaign can be pretty expensive and if that campaign doesn't do what you thought it would do it could end up being a pretty risky uh, pretty risky deal for you um, but in doing some research after I realized hey why why do these work these experiences work better than you know gift cards or things like that and what I found was actually some research had already been done on the on uh, the millennial generation and they're actually calling us the uh, us Millennials I'm a millennial uh, the experienced generation and a large number of these folks in the uh, millennials, which is actually the largest uh, generation with the, the most buying power on the planet right now. Um, they've passed on things like buying homes, buying cars, they're using ride sharing apps. Um, and so it begs to the question of what are they actually spending their money on? If they've got most of the money and most of the buying power on the planet, where are they spending their money? Well, a study of millennials by Airbnb showed they, they studied millennials in the US, UK, China, um, highlighted two key trends that have been really all consuming for millennials and it's travel. Um, you know, they, they uh, Airbnb calls us the YOLO generation. And, you know, this travel and this experience has been deeply embedded into our self perception, uh, especially with social media and Instagram and Facebook, everybody wants to, you know, travel the world and they want to act like they're, you know, uh, always somewhere uh, worth being and they're just living this grandiose life. Sometimes it's true and sometimes it's it's a facade, but nonetheless, everybody wants to live uh, live their best life. You know, they, you only live once. And so we've seen this this shift in in um, in value and consumer behavior. And here's a graph that uh, uh, McKinsey and Company did. It's a big research firm showing where uh, the most personal consumption expenditure was. And it's been on experience related services. And it shows down here what those are which is memberships, clubs, sports, parks, theaters, events, museums, gambling, food services, accommodations, travel. And then you look at like travel as when I'm looking at Facebook marketing, uh, which is what we focus on a lot, the number one uh, area of targeting within Facebook is travel habits. There's, there's more ways to target people based on their travel habits and their interest in travel than any other, uh, than any other field on Facebook. So, those factors combined is why I jumped in right away because I knew uh, incentives work and I knew experiences were awesome. And so, you know, this membership just provide a much better uh, incentive to give away in the campaigns that we were using um, at a much lower cost than spending $200 every time, $300 every time you wanted to run an incentive campaign. Now we could do it for a fraction of the cost and, and it almost was, uh, the cost was negligible once you factored in uh, you know, how many members, how many trips you're able to give away. So I'm going to jump into the, the revenue streams that I've been able to generate and kind of show you what that look, looks like. And then I'll show you uh, how I was able to do it. So I implemented marketing boost first into my existing business as a marketing agency. 
So I do a lot of uh, client acquisition through webinars. I've been able to increase my webinar attendance by 38% on average, uh, getting people to attend webinars to learn about our products and services. Whether it's pre-recorded or live, it makes no difference. The attendance went through the roof by being able to offer an incentive. And I run so many webinars, it's not reasonable that I could spend the kind of money to acquire an experience that people would actually value every time I ran a webinar. I would spend you know, tens of thousands of dollars uh, to do that, but now I can do it for you know, just a few hundred bucks a year. Um, I was able to replace discounts and pricing promotions, and that's a big one for me. You know, a lot of times if you're selling products or selling services, the, the, the first thing that we try to do as a business owner is discount our services to get people in the door, run a promotion or run a sale. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, that's most of the time what we do. Uh, oftentimes, even before we spend money on marketing, the first thing we'll do is take money out of our own pocket and say, here, I'll just give my money away to get more customers. Um, but with incentives, I was able to do away with that. And instead uh, of, of running a 10 to 20% discount, I was able to give away one of the incentives that's offered by Marketing Boost, thus increasing my profits on, uh, by 10 or 20% by not having to give away setup fees and not having to give away monthly retainers and give percentage discounts like that. Um, and then I've also been able to offer it as gifts to clients. In turn, the clients not only get a vacation that's on me, uh, but they saw immediate value in the products and then started inquiring about the membership and wanting to join. So in total, by implementing Marketing Boost, uh, my average revenue per customer went up $235, which doesn't seem like a lot, but we've got 113 uh, paying clients. So when you look at that, that's $26,555 of increased monthly recurring revenue. And over the five months that we've been actively implementing this and doing away with the pricing promotions, uh, we've seen an increase in, uh, by $132,775 uh, uh, when we closed out 2019. So it made a massive, massive impact just in my own business. Uh, but then I saw the, uh, another opportunity to be able to create digital products around showing people how to use this. So um, as a digital marketing firm, we obviously handle all the marketing for our clients. But there's another set of consumers out there, business owners who uh, can't necessarily afford, or maybe they just enjoy marketing and generating leads, or maybe there are other you know, marketing companies out there who want to learn how to generate leads uh, in a new way. And so I created a couple of digital products that, allowed, uh, that, that showed insurance agents specifically how to generate leads using the system. So the same strategies that we're implementing for our, our uh, retainer clients, I showed them, here's how you can do it yourself if you want to do it put together some digital products. And here you can see uh, the screenshots out of our uh, Kajabi platform where I host all of my, uh, my content. And, and you can see I, I put these on a monthly retainer, which is a, a monthly uh, recurring payment, which is another thing. A lot of times these digital products I would sell for a flat fee, normally 239, 479, something like that. Uh, but with this, I was able to actually charge a monthly fee and build up more monthly recurring revenue. So um, in four months time after uh, launching these programs, I was able to uh, bring in an, uh, another $43,286 of, uh, of revenue in just a few months by putting these products together. And this was just a matter of spending a few hours behind a webinar, recording these products, packaging them together and putting them out. So with a few, months, uh, a, few, uh, a few hours worth of work, I was able to generate another $43,000 that wasn't there before Marketing Boost. Um, and then the third and uh, uh, one of the more exciting ways is I built a, an affiliate team from it, uh, which if, if you're aware, you make 40% uh, monthly recurring revenue by sharing the membership with others. Uh, so I share it with clients, show them how to use incentives to grow their agency. Uh, we were talking before the call, a lot of times I will actually um, show my clients uh, the incentives. A lot of times there's some pushback. And so I'll say, you know what, I've got the vacation, I'll provide the vacation. I believe in it so much. Let me just try a campaign for you. If you like it, great. If not, that's okay too. No, no cost out of your pocket. I'll run the campaign for them. They'll love it. And then all of a sudden they'll want the membership. So then I get them the membership. Um, and there's no right or wrong way to do this. There's any number of ways to, to build an affiliate team. Uh, for me, I focus on business owners because they're going to use the membership uh, oftentimes like on that first slide within their own company to grow their, their uh, profit margins or to increase value or retain customers. Um, which in turn is going to create longer standing customers. I don't know my exact retention rate, but I feel like it's pretty high. I don't have a lot of churn of customers. Once they get in, they keep the membership uh, because I show them how to use it for their own business rather than going after other affiliates who are only getting the membership to sell the membership to somebody else. I found a lot better success personally 
by sharing the membership with somebody who's going to get intrinsic value within their own business, irregardless of whether they sign up another affiliate or not. And uh, that's just helped really keep a, uh, keep my team uh, sustained without having a lot of churn. So all total, what did it amount to in 2019? Uh, I was able to generate $176,061 in, in additional income that would have otherwise been impossible without the, the Marketing Boost membership. Um, and most of this money, again, is on recurring monthly revenue, which just comes in like clockwork. So most of my time was invested on the front end, probably 60 days of you know, actual thought and putting it together and planning and how I'm going to get this implemented in the business. And from that, it's just been, uh, it's just been ongoing and, and a lot of low maintenance. I really don't have to spend a lot of time with it because of the way that I've implemented it. Um, so how, how this really works uh, specifically within the insurance niche Incentives, which is a version of what psychologists call extrinsic motivators, what you have to understand is they don't alter the attitudes um, that underline our behaviors. Uh, they, don't, they don't create uh, you know, enduring commitment. Rather, what they do is they temporarily change what we do. So that's precisely why they work. I'm gonna show you uh, what I mean by that. So um, a lot of times there's a big misconception around incentives, especially with with business owners who have tried to do something and, and give away things. And I think understanding this concept will really help you not only leverage it to generate leads, uh, but also explaining to business owners why this is so important and how it's so effective. So the prospects, uh, you know, the big misconception is that prospects only focus on the incentive rather than the service, right? So within the insurance world, they only, they're only signing up to get the free thing. They're not really interested in insurance or in car sales, they're only interested in getting the thing. They don't really care about the, the car. They're just going to play the game and do the test drive to get the thing. And that's typically the, the experience that people have had in the past revolving around incentives. And this was true before the advances of, of social media targeting. But now we're able to match the incentive with the people who are interested in not only the incentive, but also the product at the same time. And on the next screen, I'm going to show you how that works. But Again, they're interested in not only the incentive, but also the product. So we're only going to show these ads to people who have an interest in the location and also interested in the product. And this, what this does is it finds us somebody who's responding to an ad who's interested in the product, and we're using the incentive to only incentivize them to make a decision they were already interested in. Uh, we're not using them to get the incentive to get them interested in the product. They're already interested. We simply leverage the incentive to push them over the edge or to make the decision now or to do business with you versus with another guy because they're already thinking about doing business this way. So they're already thinking about insurance. We're using incentive to do it with us. Um, so it, you know, a lot of times they'll think this entices the wrong type of prospect. Again, look at what I just said before, or it costs too much money adds, it adds to the customer acquisition cost. A lot of times that's true, but with marketing boost now, it, you can get this done for a fraction of the cost of what you would normally have to spend on an incentive to get somebody to, uh, to opt in or to uh, participate. So here's just an example of the Branson uh, giveaway. So here's what we do is we look at, uh, I pulled up just a simple uh, you know, Branson Visitor Bureau, who's interested in Branson? What is the demographic of people who visit Branson? And it gives us all of these things, 21.7% 21 of visitors uh, it came there, it was their first time, 36.6% uh, were families, 64% were, were adults, 78% traveled via personal vehicle. Now this is important because now I can see, hey, they traveled via vehicle, so that'll give me a radius of where my most effective uh, geographic area to target this is. Most people aren't flying to Branson, so if I'm gonna target this Branson giveaway, I'm gonna target it within a radius that people can drive. Realistically, and it tells us right down here that uh, it gives us even our mile range. So I can run this um, probably anywhere between 100 and 650 miles is gonna get me most of my uh, traffic. So that, that'll give me my geo target. And you can do this for every location that Marketing Boost has. Um, we can see the average age is 59.2, the average um, uh, spent, how much they spend, how long they typically stay, four days, that's perfect for what we offer. Um, and then uh, the average number of so uh, shows seen. But I also like that uh, the certain percentage use RV campers. This tells me a little bit about my customer and the fact that they have some uh, disposable income. So when you look at this, this is a, the perfect customer uh, for a lot of insurance clients. This is who they want. They want adults. They want people who have expendable income. Um, they want people that are near their area. 
So it matches up with the, ge the uh, demographics of who our client is looking for. Sometimes that may not be the case, in which case you look at another location that may better fit the demographic that you're trying to attract. And so here's just an example of what I mean when you match the interest and the targeting. So for this particular ad, what we would run is we would simply put in our geographic area. Um, here we put in Missouri. We excluded Branson plus 50 miles. Most of the people that live in Branson aren't going to see a lot of value in a free Branson stay. So we're gonna exclude 50 miles of Branson. And we wanna get people outside of that range who could see value and realistically use it because, hey, we're 100 miles away. I don't have to worry about plane tickets or anything like that. We can take a weekend with the family and actually go there. And you want the customer to actually envision themselves and, and realistically being able to use it without the objection of, oh, I won this Vegas trip, but we don't have the money for plane tickets and we live in Florida. We're not going to be able to get to Vegas. I don't see value in that. So it, it's, uh, you know, just thinking about how the customer might, might see this offer and making sure you match your targeting up in that way. And then we just simply put two uh, targeting features here uh, and then the age demographic as well, 35 to 65. Uh, because we know there's not many people uh, you know, 18 to 24 going to Branson or 18 to 30. So we make sure our age demographic matches what the Visitor Bureau says. And then we use uh, the interest of vehicle insurance for this particular campaign and must also meet at least one of the following and also interested in Branson. So now this is a very targeted uh, campaign. You can see on the right side here, it's uh, only got about 3,000 uh, person reach over here, which isn't huge. Um, but it gives us uh, the, the exact 3,000 up to 3,000 a day that we're looking for. Um, and you can really scale this uh, on a budget as small as five to 10 bucks a day, all the way up to a couple hundred dollars a day and see massive results because you're hitting people who are already interested in vehicle insurance. Your ad is offering uh, vehicle insurance and they're also interested in the, uh, in the uh, location that we're using. And then there's a number of ways that you can actually use that incentive. You could say, um, use it on the front side of the ad copy of, hey, get a quote and you'll uh, be entered to win or get a quote and win. Or you can actually not even mention the, the giveaway, get them to opt in and then use the giveaway on that confirmation screen of, hey, if you call us in the next 24 hours, you're going to be entered to win. So you can use it just to drive them in to make a phone call rather than uh, having your have to call out. There's a number of different ways that you can use it, but uh, as long as the targeting is there and you've got the ad copy matched up to the demographics that you and your customer are looking for, it's a home run almost every time uh, that you use it. And there's so many resources inside of Marketing Boost that you can use from videos to photos and things like that. Uh, it just, it really makes it about as turnkey as possible, short of Andy or uh, Marco pushing the buttons for you. Uh, they've really done all of the legwork to make this successful for you. So here's some actual results and then I'm done here. Um, just so you can see that it works at scale. Uh, here's a campaign that we ran. We generated uh, 2000 leads for this client um, over the, from April to October um, at a, a result of $5 a lead. Uh, most of your average insurance agencies to give perspective are gonna pay anywhere between 10 all the way up to $40 for a lead. Uh, most of those are shared leads and they have no idea how they were generated. They're not targeted to spec. It's just coming out of a database and the closing rate is really low. For an exclusive lead, uh, $5 is unheard of, much less exclusive and in real time. Here's another one, uh, 1,400 leads we were able to generate uh, for $4.86. Um, here's some, we got 75 cents a lead. We got 30 leads at 75 cents a piece. Um, these were life insurance leads. Uh, another 100 leads for $5. Um, we've got 14 over here on life insurance for $2.93. So it, just a number of different, I could go on for days showing those results, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's been, it's been great. Um, you can look me up, Sean J. Mathis. My dad's name is Sean Mathis on Facebook. Uh, so don't send him a friend request, but mine's Sean J. Mathis. Um, would love to, uh, to connect with you and, and share. I'm also in the group. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, just let me know.